you have 20 million people who are producing gold in humane condition. They are barely survived from the production. They are using toxic chemicals. They harm the environment. How is it possible? This nonsense situation. Hey guys, welcome back to Altcoin Boss Spotlight with me, Leah Heilpen, the show where we speak to entrepreneurs, innovators, and thought leaders in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. Joining me today is Philippe Bednarek, the co-founder and the CEO of Gold Finex. This company appears to be a one of a kind, bringing new blockchain technology to the established and traditional world of gold mining. With their own cryptocurrency geeks, Gold Finex aims to make gold mining more profitable and run more efficiently. Don't forget to let us know in the comment section below who you want us to interview next, which topics you want us to cover, and if you enjoyed the show, then don't forget to hit the like button. Philippe, welcome to the program today. How are you doing? Hi, I'm very good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolute pleasure. I've actually been really excited um, to speak to you because this is a one-of-a-kind kind of project and I'm sure you must have faced a lot of regulatory issues um, especially um, you know some compliance issues so just take me through this what were some of the regulatory issues that you faced yes you're right there's a lot uh, more than issues very uncertainty uh, it's uh, the when you run a uh, you run a project like uh, the gold Phoenix project it's a worldwide project and uh, you when you started you don't really know where this project will uh, will work and where the people will be interested in your project. So you cannot you cannot apply for uh, a license everywhere in the world. You have to start first and you have to take the risk. Now we know now we know where uh, our audience is, uh, where our investors are. So we now can focus and obviously uh, Europe and uh, Asia and US also are our main markets. So this is where we're gonna be filing uh, the, uh, uh, with the regulator in, in, uh, in Asia, in Europe, and in the United States. But you cannot start with, uh, with, uh, with a big plan of uh, uh, filing everywhere you, you yeah. want to sell. Uh, we're selling online. We start our ICO like many online, with online marketing. And so you really don't know where it is going to catch up. And uh, so now we know, we know our market. And this is where we're gonna uh, we're gonna file our prospectus. Right. So you essentially had to start sort of figure out your market and then go from there when it comes to um, regulatory issues. So it's quite yeah, a, you know, yeah. Go on. There's so many, sorry, sorry, Laya, but there's so many countries, and you don't really know where where is uh, your audience will be uh, will be responding to this this kind of project. Uh, when we started, Germany was a good a good. Uh, uh, a good country where we had the good response, but suddenly Asia uh, uh, could fire and we moved our marketing in, in, in Asia, China and the surrounding countries. So again, this is a moving target and we have to, to, to make sure that we file our uh, our license where it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. You just have to adapt, don't you? Um, because, you know, you, you don't know, like you said, it is a moving target. But it's quite interesting because you guys actually help small to medium sized um, gold miners around the world act more efficiently and essentially be more profitable. So take me through this. Why did you actually decide to focus in this area? Why? Well, the idea comes from like many ideas that entrepreneurs uh, have. It comes when you see something that doesn't make sense. Uh, basically, the, the, what's going on on the mining industry, on the sub-segment, which is the artisanal gold mining, doesn't make sense. Uh, what doesn't make sense is that gold, everybody knows about gold. Everybody wants gold. I mean, if I offer you a bar of gold, I think you're going to accept it. Uh, if I offer you a bar... Yes, if I offer you a bar of copper, of iron, I'm not sure you're going you're gonna to be happy with that. So uh, everybody likes gold. The, 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 the gold market is a supply side market. Whatever you produce, you sell. You don't need to brand it. You don't need to market it. You, if you produce gold today, you sell it. And the price on the international market is growing up. You know, it's... Uh, it's on the eight today. This is a very high uh, price today compared to 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So it's ever increasing value. But you have to 20 million people 
who are producing gold and they are producing gold in humane condition. They are barely survived from the production. They are using toxic, uh, 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 toxic chemicals. Uh, they harm the environment. How, how is it possible? So VID came from uh, this, uh, uh, this nonsense situation of the artisanal gold mining. Mm. And I think it's interesting, you know, when you talk about gold and you say, you know, it's just sort of going up from here. I speak to a lot of gold guys um, that are also very pro Bitcoin and they say, you know, we haven't seen what's coming next for gold, actually. So um, incredibly profitable. But you have your own cryptocurrency, um, Geeks, and the goal was to raise 250 million euros in Geeks' ICO. So did you manage this? Well, the goal is not to raise 250 million right away. The goal is to raise 250 million in the course of the next three years. Okay. Uh, we, okay. We, we don't need to have 250 million euros in the bank today. We would not be able to spend it. So there's no, there's, uh, it doesn't make sense to raise this money now. What we, what we raised so far is 17 million, which is enough to start the operation. Uh, we've been vetting a lot of mine. This is a big part of our job is to uh, select and vet mines. That means we need to uh, to spend a lot of money going to the to the uh, uh, on sites, sending geologists, sending uh, engineers. Uh, so it's ongoing. We start. We already have one mine in production in Ivory Coast. A second mine will be, I think, uh, up and running in two two weeks. Uh, and we have a plan now where course, which is spent on 16 different uh, locations. Uh, we have plan uh, in, uh, in Canada, in East Coast Canada, West Coast Canada. Uh, in South America, we have mines in Bolivia. So this is an ongoing pr uh, uh, process. And uh, we're going to raise this 250 million in the course of the next uh, three years. And I'm pretty optimistic that we're going to achieve that. If not... We're going to just scale down, uh, okay. scale down a little bit. Okay. Uh, we just, instead of uh, uh, 15 uh, countries, we're going to be to be on seven if we raise half of it. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. totally scalable project. That's the beauty of this. But today, if we don't raise any, any more money, we, we're going to manage, manage to do uh, maybe a little lower scale um, operation, but we'll be still a profitable operation. So then talk to me about how the money raised is actually going to be used to make um, gold mining more efficient, more profitable. You also mentioned, you know, more humane. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you have been, uh, if you already been in a, in a, in a gold mining operation. Side, I have but not. No, absolutely not. No. And, and honestly, this is not an, uh, not very pleasant experience. Uh, just, just to give you an idea, 80% uh, of the gold, every year 3,000 3, tons of gold are produced on, on the earth. Uh, 1,000 more is recycled, coming from recycling, but this is another story. So 3,000 tons. 80% uh, of these 3,000 tons come from the big, major uh, mining operation like, like uh, Barrick, Anglo Gold. Uh, Newmount, Rio Tinto, this big operation, and uh, they, they employ two million people, and they're doing the business very well. But the access to capital of these big companies is is very easy. They can raise bonds of one billion dollars in very very very, sh very short time. Uh, but twenty percent of this production, six hundred tons, are is coming from people who have no no mechanization at all, no access to mechanization at all. So when you say improving, it's, it's yes, it's more than improving, it's mm -hmm. understatement. These people are st still uh, extracting gold the same way as the miner 5,000 years ago were doing, using ba basically their hands and very rudimentary tools. The panning, you know, they use the span. Uh, it's, it's amazing how this uh, this uh, uh, segment of this industry is living in the same condition that thousand years ago and producing and, and again that's the what doesn't make sense is they produce something that everybody else in the planet wants mm. so so to, to answer your question is it's it's the way we do it's so simple we give tools the tools can be a, 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 a water pump 
you know, a water pump replace uh, roughly five to ten kids in the river, you know, carrying buckets of water. If you put a pump, very cheap pump, you already replace this, uh, uh, these kids I I in the river. Of course, we, we go further. We, we, uh, we finance uh, shakers, drummer, uh, drummers, uh, uh, sluice box, all this equipment that, you know, it's, it's not electronic equipment, it's mechanic equipment. So it's very easy to, to handle and really to, to use. But, I mean, depending on where we are uh, operating, when we are financing, the, we, we adapt uh, uh, ourselves to the situation and we provide the right equipment to this, uh, to, to this miner. So it's, it's so simple. The, again, re, 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 think about it. If the, these people are using hands, their hands. Anything you bring to them, as the immediate immediate uh, consequence in terms of production, uh, bringing a, a sluice box, which is very cheap, but multiply by two, by three, by four, by five, the daily production. Mm. So let me and just jump in then. If it's you know, so simple, why don't you think it's been done before? Well, it has been done before, but not uh, the way we, we, we did. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure everybody has a story where they went to to Africa or South America and maybe try to finance a gold mine. But this is, this, the risk, the risk, uh, the perception of the risk is so high that nobody in the traditional uh, banking financing world wants to, to be involved because it's associated risk. And also the legal system is, is uh, non-existent. Right. So uh, whatever it is about uh, debt, equity deals, doesn't work in this, in this environment. You have to find something else. Uh, debt equity uh, deals uh, uh, works very well in our uh, in our uh, Western world, but in a, in the jungle uh, it doesn't work. So you have to find other ways to do it. And the way we do is a pre-purchase of a production uh, with a royalty attached. So it's some, something that. Uh, the, the, the miners understand and co are comfortable with. Yeah, and I want to just focus um, on the Geeks holders for a second because the Geeks holders, they are not equity holders um, being a utility coin. So how can they be certain that they will receive rewards from the gold that's actually mined? Well, if we want, I want to be uh, precise, it's, it's not a utility token. It's, non, it's not a security token. Yes. But the rest, you know, the... the, the you, you can you can call it as you want. Uh, it's currency token. I call it as a currency token. So your your question is is the the, the, the most interesting question for an investor. Uh, what we do is we uh, the, the the money we raise through the token is invested in the is is invested in mining operation. We finance mining operation, and we got let's say twenty percent of the production. Uh, we don't we don't get 20 percent of the bottom line of the of, in money. We get 20 percent in output in gold, and this gold is is put in a reserve, and we don't deal with the reserve. The reserve is managed by a trust and a, a trust company and a board of trustee. It's totally separate from our operation. This gold is accumulating, and uh, the the, uh, the the beneficiary of a, of a trust. Uh, of this gold, which is accumulating every month, every week, every month, by uh, with uh, uh, each shipment of gold, is is basically the beneficiary of the coin holder. So you have a trust, you have an asset. The beneficiary of the asset are the the, uh, the gigs coin holder. So for if any uh, if in any event a catastrophe happens to the gigs or even our company or whatever. The, the board of trustee can decide to liquidate the gold and and, and uh, distribute this proceed to the coin holder. This is how it works. So with all of that in mind then, talk to me about how people can actually then trade gigs. What platforms can they trade on right now? And do you have any other platforms lined up? Yeah, we are, we are today we have two exchanges where the gigs is traded. Uh, the first is, is Coinsbeat and the second is a Cymex. Uh, the difference between the two is that uh, uh, Coinsbit is, is more European 
uh, focus. Uh, and Cymex uh, welcome U.S. and uh, and corporation as clients. Uh, so we have two exchanges today. Our goal is to be to a third one very quickly and more dedicated to the Chinese market. Okay, so you mentioned earlier um, that you hope to raise X amount of money in three years, but let's talk two to five years. Where do you guys see yourself? What can we actually expect um, from the company in the next five years? Well, what we know, what we know is that for whatever we raise, our calculation um, ends always the same magic formula. Uh, it's whatever we raise, uh, we're going to find 10 times, 10 times uh, of uh, gold value in the vote of uh, the, the reserve. So if we raise 250 million, we're going to end up with 2.5 billion in the, in the reserve. Uh, if we raise less, it's, we just have to multiply. We, 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 we try to do the, the worst case scenario and, uh, and, uh, and at the end we, we end up with the same magic uh, numbers, which is 10 times. So whatever we raise, we're going to end up with 10 times of value in the reserve. Right, I'm with you. So just finally, I've actually been really excited to ask you this because of course, you know, this project is entirely gold centered. So a lot of people right now say that Bitcoin is the new gold. They sort of talk about it as that digital gold. Some people say, you know, it, it's going to surpass it. Some people just say that it's going to um, sort of work alongside it. So what are your thoughts then? Do you think Bitcoin could ever be the new gold? Well, there's some similarity between the, between gold and the uh, uh, and Bitcoin, obviously the uh, the fact that there's a finite uh, finite number of uh, of uh, bitcoins uh, reminds what we know about gold. There's a finite number of uh, ounces on the planet, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so there's some basically similarities. Uh, I'm all, I can I cannot be in uh, in uh, running a, a company. Uh, involved in in the coins and the crypto coins and not believing in, in 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 Bitcoin. Of course, I believe it. I think there is some challenge to the Bitcoin. Uh, the speed of a network is a, is obviously a a, a, a big challenge. Yeah. But honestly, I'm very bullish and uh, I'm still buying Bitcoins. So. Sounds like you're bullish on both them, which to be honest, I think is a smart move. Philip, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure, and I wish you the best of luck and um, with the coming years with the company. Thank you, Layan.